Hi everyone, I'm Kelly and this is Jodie and we're the Sagittarius Sisters. Uh, it's a bit of a riff off our combined Sag Midheavens. Uh, we had a bit of fun at a recent conference mm -hmm. with the Sag Midheaven crew yes. uh, at SOTA 2015. Mm -hmm. And so we thought we would get together and talk a little bit more about our favourite topic, astrology. And today we're going to talk about the Saturn Neptune Square, which has just kicked off November 2015 and is going to be influencing us off and on throughout 2016. So again in June of 2016 and then in September. So this angle is a pretty big one. Would you say, Jodie, you said you've been obsessed with I'm it? I'm obsessed with it, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It's important. It's important for all of 2016, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is. We were sort of thinking, do we do a 2016 year ahead type of uh, recording? And then we realized that really this aspect, there are other things happening in 2016, mm -hmm. um, but this particular aspect is the big one. It's like the new Uranus-Pluto square. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So what we want to tell people about, we want to say, okay, what's happening? So mm -hmm. transiting Saturn in Sagittarius will be making a square to Neptune in Pisces. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be happening uh, November 2015 from 7 Sag to 7 Pisces. And then in June of 2016 from 12 Sag to 12 Pisces. And then again in September 2016 for the third and final time uh, around 10 degrees of Sag and Pisces. Um, we've got a couple of different videos we're going to record for you guys on this, but today we're going to talk really just about the main themes and symbolism of Saturn and Neptune coming together. So what it might mean generally and how you might experience it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in life, I guess. So, Joe, over to you. You've got some great keywords. Yeah, so as Kelly mentioned, I'm a bit obsessed with this Saturn-Neptune um, square happening. And I've also last year, um, or this year, had um, Saturn influencing my Neptune directly, which affects my midheaven. So I had these phrases coming to me that were very... Um, uh, how Saturn and, and Neptune meeting each other would maybe... Um, manifest right totally and so I think the first one that came to me was the form meeting the formless yeah right? that's they're great keywords aren't mm -hmm, they? like mm -hmm. the idea of Saturn being the planet all about form mm -hmm. things being given structure and shape versus Neptune which is a planet that really has no form no yeah. structure and no shape <laughs> very ethereal <laughs> Yeah, that's yes. a word that people say a lot about. Yeah, the very Neptune. ethereal. And yeah. then they say Saturn is more about like real world reality, right? Yes. Real world stuff. Yeah. And so that's really the clash or the connection here, isn't it? This idea mm -hmm. about there's a link that's been formed by this angle or aspect, as we mm -hmm. call it in astrology, where things that have a lot of form are being influenced by the planet that has no form mm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Things that typically have no form, Neptune mm. just drifts along and now Saturn's mm. come along and, and maybe we have to give things form mm -hmm. that were just a dream or just an idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we were talking earlier and Neptune really needs this Saturn, right? Because it That's helps right. it bring it down to Earth. These very spiritual topics or the ethereal um what's floating around and guess the collective collective unconscious or consciousness Absolutely. yeah coming down um to reality totally yeah yeah, yeah. because it's, i think you had made that point that was so beautiful and eloquent the idea that saturn needs net or neptune needs saturn yeah. sorry and it's about making things manifest. Mm -hmm. I, that's another word that we sort of loved yeah. for Saturn that doesn't really get talked about that one thing Saturn does it helps you make things real Things become mm -hmm. tangible. You bring something into form or into being mm -hmm. with Saturn. And so that's the gift of Saturn. Um, the only thing is that, um, you know, to really make a dream real, you have to first clarify the dream. Yes. Um, you know, Saturn won't let you make everything come true, but it will let you make one or two things that really have some solidness or some great potential. And also, um, wouldn't you say, Kelly, it, it's really about, yeah, focusing on a couple things. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. you might have all these wonderful ideas, like, channeling these ideas, but, like, you can only manifest or only put an embodiment to them. A yeah, few of them. A few of right? them. Yeah. They're not, they're not at all going to manifest, right? No, they're not. No. And I think that's another 
Oops. thing of satin. Sorry, we're just uh, getting our heads around the technicality yeah. here. Uh, another key concept of satin is that it is about that discernment that mm. you, it is quality over quantity. So yes. it's often about prioritizing and picking the one or two dreams, you know, you get to hold on to one dream or two dreams, but you don't get to make all 10 of your dreams real because practically or realistically, you don't have the time, you don't have the energy and you probably don't have the resources. Totally. Um, so Saturn wants you to do one or two things and do them to a really high standard. Mm -hmm. Um, but that means you have to do the Neptune piece, which is letting go That's of some right. of those other dreams. That's right. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, the dream meeting the body was the other phrase that came up for me around Saturn and Neptune meeting. Because a square, and you've described this, Kelly, is like a square is like two things meeting each other, right? Yes, These two absolutely. planets are meeting each other in, in the sky. Yeah, really, there's right? an, an energetic square. kind of, yeah. yeah. If they were to, I mean, the symbol, the symbolism, I guess, is that they would sort of come at each other at a right angle. Yes. And so symbolically, I'm not saying literally, but symbolically yeah. they would <laughs> symbolically. bang into each other. Yeah. And, you know, when yeah, when I teach aspects, we talk about people, if you stand at a right angle with another person um, and you both try and walk forward, you're going to bang into each other mm -hmm. essentially. Um, and so adjustments are required. And that mm -hmm. is the key theme of any square, yes. um, which is that one thing has to adjust or accommodate the presence of another. Mm -hmm. And so that idea of form now has to accommodate the formless and the piece about the, the formlessness has to sort of accommodate something where there is a form. Yes, um, absolutely. So I think we'll probably just pause there for now mm -hmm. and we'll pick this up again very shortly.